Hi everyone, welcome back this week to the classroom. Now I want to make this video a little bit different this week. And if you have not already noticed, I've been intentionally not talk too much about COVID and the vaccine in my videos lately. Now because I think we should focus on our health in a holistic way and not just on one particular disease. But there is a study published in the Nature Scientific Reports last week or at the end of April that has generated quite a lot of discussion among people who love the Pfizer vaccine and people who are more cautious about it that I think is worthy for us to look at it this week. Now, My video title asks, Did the MIT Israel study prove the Pfizer vaccine increases heart attacks in young people? The short answer is no. but is there an association or correlation according to the study? Yes. So I'm going to uh, break down this article and do some explanation for you guys and also look at some implication of this study. So let's get started. First, let's look at what kind of study is this. This study titled Increased Emergency Cardiovascular Events Among Under 40 Population in Israel During Vaccine Rollout and third COVID-19 wave is a retrospective population-based study that analyzed data collected by the Israel National Emergency Medical Service to determine if there was any signal that would suggest a problem between the vaccine, COVID-19 wave, and cardiovascular events. Specifically, the study looked at cardiac arrest, CA, and acute coronary syndrome ACS. Now, cardiac arrest means the heart has an electrical or beating problem and the patient can be unconscious. ACS means a typical heart attack and the heart is stressed due to decreased blood supply and limited oxygen. Now, in this particular study, both of the cardiovascular events were diagnosed by responding paramedics using an electrical cardiogram, ECG or EKG. Now, let's look at what did they observed in the study. Let's look at these two graphs that I have a bracket around it. The authors saw an increased EMS call of cardiac arrest and acute coronary syndrome shortly after the third COVID wave in their country and the first two doses of the Pfizer vaccine in people aged from 16 to 39 years old. Now, however, it was interesting that there was no increase in EMS calls during the second wave period, as I pointed out in this figure. The permanent association was quite clear and is also supported by statistical analysis. That there was a detailed table in the article, you can check that out. But the highlight here is that there was a statistically significant increase of over 25% in cardiac arrest call and 26% increase in ACS-related calls during the January-May 2021 and compared to the same period in 2020, in particular in the age group of 16 to 39 years old. Now, both of these values carry a p-value. Now, for example, a p-value less than 0 0.05 means it had less than 5% chance due to random events. So these are the good statistical values. But not everything presented in this article makes a very good sense. And for instance, here, this is the second part of the graph that I just presented. Notice that green line. The green line represents suspected single vaccine doses for recovered individual after April 1st, 2021. Now, in Israel, uh, the government suggests that people that are recovered from COVID-19 and they should get one dose. Now, notice that that doesn't correlate with an increased uh, EMS call related to cardiac arrest and acute coronary syndrome for the 16 to 39 years old. One of the good thing about this study is that they very carefully stated the limitations in their study. 
They stated that their data did not include people who went to the hospital by themselves, which they estimated to be 50% of all events. In other words, their statistical analysis was based on roughly half of the acute coronary syndrome cases in Israel during that period. Also, the diagnosis of ACS is. More complicated than cardiac arrest, and there could be diagnosis errors by the EMS personnel. The study also did not report if the affected patients had any underlying comorbidities, previous COVID infection, or if they had received the Pfizer vaccine. Now, in other words, the EMS data did not directly tie each case to either COVID-19 infection. Or COVID-19 vaccination, and third, the author stated that it was hard to tell if the increased incidence of heart problems was driven by COVID-19 infection or by vaccines, or if EMS calls were delayed during lockdown when there were no vaccines. Now, some of the questions we can think about is that first, could fully vaccinated people feel safer in calling for medical assistance? And leading to higher EMS calls. And second, could fear of vaccine side effects lead to higher EMS calls? And lastly, let's look at the implication and what more can be done in future studies based on this particular one. The authors stated clearly in their abstract, which is the first paragraph when everyone read their article, that their study did not establish a causal relationship, but suggested taking a closer look at why there was a surge in cardiac arrest and acute coronary syndrome cases report or calls in young adults during the observed period. Now, to look beyond this particular study, a different recent retrospective study reported an increased risk of multiple cardiovascular diseases in people who recovered from COVID-19, even for those who were under 65 years old and lack risk factors such as obesity and diabetes. Now, these retrospective observational studies are really good at giving us something to think about. And from a basic physiological or immunological perspective, it is very crucial to find out if the increased cardiovascular risk are related to the virus itself. Meaning, are the virus directly causing damage to our heart tissues or other organs, or if the human immune response to the virus? Is causing this damage, meaning are we reacting too much to the virus? And these are the questions that basic researchers need to dig into, in my opinion. We know the mRNA vaccines are designed to resemble a natural infection or natural viral infection to generate an immune response. So, could it induce way more immune response in some patients than others? And that is the question. The bottom line is that I think everyone should keep an open mind when they're reading a study like this one. Now, the authors of this study very carefully list out all of their possible limitations, and and also they did not hint any causative effects. At the same time, they've done a very good job of pointing a direction for other researchers to look for a more definitive answer in the near future. That is all for this week. Thank you again for all of your support. Now, currently, I'm rebranding this channel to talk about a more holistic approach to health and wellness. And like my mission of my channel says, the mission statement—I don't know if you ever noticed—is learning to live a healthier life. And I hope everyone can do that through this channel. Now, I will still do periodic. Important updates on COVID. So, if these are the topics that interest you, I hope you can think about sticking around and subscribe to the channel. This video is posted on Mother's Day 2022, and I would like to say Happy Mother's Day to all of the mom who are watching this video. 
And if you are still sticking around at this point of the video and you are a son or daughter who would like to try to make a zero cholesterol vegan based breakfast for your moms or for yourself, you may check out this video that is on my personal YouTube channel. Now that is all for this week and I hope to see you again next time. And thank you again for watching. Please take care. Bye.